G'day and welcome back to part two of this STC radio restoration. If you saw part one and my efforts to get it running again, you'll know I spent most of the episode barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> but that's all sorted now and the radio is working. One for 11. This week I'm going to pull it apart and paint it, but first let's have a look at the speaker. It has some minor tears here, 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 and there's probably one down here. Here it is. So apart from that, it's in perfect condition. Now, fortunately, this is the type that's bolted in at the back. There's two of the nuts. There's three. If I undo them, the speaker cone will come away from the magnet. The outside needs to be painted as well, so it'd be good if I can get the cone out. With a bit of luck, these will come away at the edges. They don't stick too well to the metal. So that looks good already. Yeah, that seems quite loose. Yeah, so that's coming away from the rusty metal frame, so that'll be all right. I should be able to take the cone out. So I'll keep doing that. I'll come back when I've got the cone loose. I've undone the cone, went fairly well. I need to pull these wires through for the voice coil. There we go. The last thing to do is undo the three nuts holding the spider. Oops. That looks pretty easy. So I'll undo the other two and we should be able to lift the cone out. Turns out there was only two nuts holding that on, but I should be able to lift this out. I think. There it is. So I'll be able to remove all the parts, sandblast it, and I can repaint it and reprotect it. I can now rebuild this area here. I looked around to buy a new cone. I can't find one this deep. I can't find one with such a small hole. Um, but this one will be okay. I'll just um, you know repair all that and it'll be fine. Now, unfortunately, it didn't come away cleanly over here, but that's, that's okay. It's still in one piece. It's just didn't come away cleanly, that's all. So I can fix that up, but the rest of it's okay. I think this will work all right. All right, I'm going to try and patch this. I'll do it in little sections, so I'm going to do this bit first. I've put some tape on the other side to hold this all together, and I'm going to use some tea bag and a bit of PVA on this piece here. This piece doesn't really need to flex all that much, so PVA will be fine here. I'll get a bit of glue here. I thinned this out a bit. It was a bit thick, but I might have gone too far. Anyway, we'll see how we go. So I'll just paint that on there. And there's my tea bag. I've left this end bit. I'm going to use a rubber adhesive here because this part needs to flex. So I'm just going to leave that bit hanging over. Well, that looks good. I could leave it like that, but it's got a bit of a kiss in it. It's trying to lift itself up a bit. So I'm going to put some uh, cling film on here. And I have checked before, this torch here is about the right weight and it should just push that down again to the right position. I'll give that a few hours to dry. They'll come back and do some more. This patch has dried up nicely, it's nice and solid. I should have pushed this into the grooves more, I, I think I pulled it tight. I should have pushed it in. I'm going to put a patch on the back anyway, so I'll remedy that when I do that. I'm going to do this one here now. Get some glue on here. And I have put a very faint pencil outline where the patch is going to go. I'm going to need some more glue, I think. Here's my tea bag patch, and I'm going to use tweezers to put it on because it looks cool. Hey, Chief, can I hold my gun sideways? It looks so cool. All right. There it is. That looks nice. All right, I'll let that dry. I think I can do this one as well without disturbing that, and then I can let them dry overnight. So once again, I've marked it out with a pencil, which I can barely see. All right, that should be enough. I'll find the crack, it's there, I think. Put a little bit of glue in there. It'll, it'll go through anyway, it won't matter. 
Now try and push it into the uh, ribs or the rib shape. Yeah, it really does want to go in. Anyway, I'll try my best. Uh, this is ripped here, so I'm going to put a rubber patch on here. And I think there's one up there, so uh, this has come along alright. I'm going to paint it with black paint. I always paint them with black paint, and that gives it a bit more rigidity and hopefully get a few more years out of it. I'll leave this dry overnight, and in the morning I'll just finish this off. I'll paint it black, and it'll be ready to go back into the basket, the speaker basket, when it's finished. So I'll do this in my spare time, and I'll start working on the chassis, I think. I've got to prepare the chassis for rust removal and repainting. I've taken all the valves out. This centre area here is mounted onto the chassis, so this all comes out. There's only maybe six wires holding this in. I'll have a look underneath in a minute. The transformer needs to come out. The three cans here can come out. They've, I've just got to bolt through them, they're easy. I'd like to get the covers off these coils if I can. I can paint around them, but I don't, the rust will be under there and I don't want that coming back out again, so I'll try and get them off if I can. I'll flip it over and I can show you what's involved underneath. I've flipped it over, and here you can see the centre section that comes out. There's four bolts through there. As I said, there's only a few wires. This resistor's got to come off. There's two wires coming in here. I think there's one here. There's an earth wire over here. This wire here's got to be undone. There's an earth connection there. Uh, this is the capacitor that was giving me trouble. I hadn't, didn't wire it in because I realised I've got to uh, undo the wire here. So I'll leave that till I reassemble the whole thing. There's an earth connection down there. And another one in the far corner. Now there's the transformer. And luckily the wiring is all connected to a tab strip. So just a matter of unsoldering and uh, putting them all back again later. So that'll come out pretty easily. Turn the chassis over. I've disconnected everything. There's one wire I haven't. There's probably ones I've missed, but we'll find out in a minute. Now, this centre bit is held on by these two rubber mounted bolts here, and there's two at the back as well. So, if I undo these, hopefully it'll all come apart. There's one screw at the back here, a bit hard to get to. Try and use a tiny screwdriver on that one. Okay. Here's the last screw. Alright, let's we'll see if it comes out. Yep. <laughs> no. Alright, right, I've missed this wire here. I didn't undo this. I don't know why. I missed this resistor as well. Okay, third time's the charm. Oh no, there's another one. Yeah, I forgot this one here. It's just standing there and I didn't see it. Uh, Alright, let's have another go. Uh, this one's... Where's that one going? This wire here also goes under it. I thought it was going around. Right, let's try again. It's hitting somewhere. Where? Oh, these here. Look, the coil. Actually, it might just be that grommet that's in the way there. There's a grommet at the back there. If I get that out, I should be able to get it through. I've managed to cut that away. Let's see if we get out. Oh, wow. Um, I'll take these top grommets out. There's two grommets on the front here as well. So if I can cut them out, we we'll, should be able to get this out. Okay, six time lucky. Oh, I think we've got it. Yes. Oh, there's another wire I missed. I'm going to cut it just so I know where it goes. Just easier. It's out now. There were a couple more connections on there than I thought, but it came out fairly easily. What I want to do is take this um, capacitor off here, the tuning capacitor, and I'm thinking I can probably, if I can protect underneath, 
I can probably sandblast the old paint and rust off and that would work out well. So I'll take the capacitor off. Uh, now the other thing I'll do in here is take the transformer off. I won't bother filming it. You know, it's just unsolder the wires and undo the bolts. So that's easy enough. And I'll take this capacitor off. So I'll do that and then I'll come back. Okay, transformer's out and that came out very easily. It looks in good condition. The wire is okay. I do need to take this RF and 2IF transformers, well the covers off at least, and then I'll protect the coils. So I'll try and take one of the covers off. I'll start by cutting this wire. I'll undo this top nut there. There'll be two nuts on the bottom as well. Here's the bottom two nuts. Okay, I flipped it over again and this hopefully will just lift off. There it is. Oops. There's the two coils. They look good. Look very good. I'll take the other two off here. Uh, little things like this I can just unscrew and remove. I have to unscrew these capacitors as well. And that'll just about give us an empty base. I can take it out in the workshop then. Now I'm out in the workshop now and I've got most of it out here. I don't have the um, dial plate that goes on the front here. I'll go and get that later. It still has the glass on it, so I'll just leave it where it is for a minute. I need to remove these uh, capacitor cans, and there's some big nuts on the bottom of two of them, and I'm not sure how the other one is held in. All right, I'll try and get these out. There's the nut on the bottom, and I can't get a socket or spanner on there. So I'm going to just balk it with this screwdriver, hopefully. I think it's slipped, but I think it came loose anyway. Maybe not. All right, that, that didn't work. I have some very old moldy drips here that might be small enough to get in there. Nah, not gonna muck it. Hang on. Maybe. I think I'm on it there. I'll just give it a try. Well, let's try doing this bottom one here. All right, I've got the grips on the bottom. I'll see if I can at least get that out. No, that one's loose. I couldn't get that out. There's a rubber seal or something on here, and I couldn't get it past it. So it's not very rubbery anymore. I'll spray them with a bit of WD-40 and see if that'll melt the rubber a little bit. I'll just do the top one as well while I'm here. All right, I've got that gripped again. I'll, I think I've got it off. I think that's coming. There it is. There it is. Okay. I've got the small clamps on there. Now I can get a good purchase on this. Oh, it's just unscrewing. <laughs> what? Couldn't move before. Yeah. Yeah, it's got yeah. Bit of WD did the trick. To get this last one off, it just has a nut on it, but it's about a half inch. I haven't seen one like this with a bolt in the end there. So that just had that big washer to fill the hole, and then the nut, which is still in my socket. So. There it is. Now uh, these will have to be cleaned up of course and then they can go back in the radio later on. I have this centre mounted plate here that has the uh, capacitor on there where the piece of wood is. And it's got some pretty heavy rust in here. I want to get it into the sandblaster and get it out. Uh, it's got some rust around these pearls as well. I need to cover these up. The sandblast makes a mess of them. Uh, so I've made some little discs. Now normally I use masking tape. But I've got these little discs and I've laser cut them on my new laser cutter. And the main reason I bought it was to cut backs out for radio. So instead of sitting there and drilling 500 holes over three hours, uh, this will just cut it while I sit there and watch it. These are 30 millimeters in diameter and they fit absolutely perfectly. So there's no uh, chance of damaging it and I can use these to paint as well. 
and I have some very thin um, self-adhesive tape on the back there, or double-sided tape, or double stick tape. So they'll just sit there, I'll be able to pop them off from the bottom. And there's the last one, so I'll just put that in there. I'll put a bit of masking tape over this hole, I don't want any of the beads getting through into the bottom and hitting the coils. I don't think that's going to stick. I tried to clean it, but it wouldn't clean. No, it's not too bad. Well, here it is, and you can see the line there, obviously, where it wasn't done and where it has been done. So it's cleaned up really nicely. I'll have to use a scourer and solve it on that area there. See if I can get one of these out. They stick pretty well. Hmm. That's come up good too, but I could have done down here. I should have turned it around. Still got some rust in there. So I'll put this back and just give another squirt around there. Should be good. I'm going to put the tuning capacitor in the sandblaster as well. I just want to get the rust off these um, you know, support plates here, off the end here. This plate here is awful. And uh, just try and clean it up a bit. I will paint this. I've media blasted this and it's come up so well I'm not going to paint it. I might put some clear on it just to protect it, stop it rusting again. But it looks really good. Very happy with that. Um, now this will be jammed solid of course. You yeah, can't move it. So the media just gets between the veins there, the plates. So to clear that I just use a pair of mouldy grips and they'll that will come clear. It sounds awful. And you can see the plates here have moved in. So even though I didn't aim at them directly, a bit of the uh, you know, overspray's got to it. There's one up this end as well. I'll pull them out. Now I did notice before I did any of this that these didn't have any sort of fanning out to adjust the tune through the frequency range. So I don't have to worry about that. I think that'll be okay. I'll just blow it out with some air. We'll see if that fixes it. I've got my analog multimeter here and I've set it on to ohms and I have it connected to this gang. Um, I also have an LED light under there so I can see through the veins. So I've cleaned it all up. It's okay. It still rubs. I can hear it rubbing. Uh, just see what... there's one. See where this is rubbing. So it's going in here. So it's right there. I'll put that back. Um, yeah, I can I can see the vein there already. So it's that one there. Just needs to be. There we go. Perfect. All right, that's one. Rearrange the meter a bit so you can see it. I'll connect it to this middle one, and that's short already. So, well, it's much the same. It's just oh no, it's on both ends. So just looking at that, it's about here where it goes into the uh, stator. Uh, they look alright. So I'll see if I can move these around. Oh, it's just that one obviously. All right. It's either that or that one. Could be right down here. Oh, it might be that. Okay. Oh, that one's fixed. Okay. All right, here's the last one. I haven't had to use the light yet, so it's a waste of time. Uh, oh, that looks good. Oh, that's good. Uh, maybe just a little bit there, maybe. Might be just where it earths across there. Mm. Yeah, something's very close, isn't it? Might be that. Might be that. Spin that little one away. That's got it. Alright, so that's all working now. Uh, you can't use a digital meter for this because you just can't follow it. So the analog meter is the go. So that's all working again. Now putting this in the sandblaster, great job, but you can ruin these pretty easily if you're not careful. So if you do this, you do it at your own risk if you've got a sandblaster, of course. But uh, that one's come up pretty good. I spent a bit of time masking this up. I think it's all covered. I've put some wood in there and just put some screws in. Same over there where the transformer was. 
I've blanked some of the larger holes in the front there. So I'll put this in the media blaster and it should clean up well. That's out of the sandblaster, that's come up pretty good. Uh, there's some spots over here I need to just use a scour or something on it, just a bit deeper than other parts, but uh, generally that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. The ends, I couldn't quite get in there, this was too big for my uh, little sandblaster there, so I'll just use a bit of, uh, it's just paint, there's no rust on there, so I'll just use a bit of scour and a uh, solvent or something that'll come off. Uh, same, same with this here, I've got to finish cleaning this up and mask it off. Another thing I have to do is this dial, and it's quite a complex unit, but it's in pretty good condition. There's no real rust on it, so I think I can dismantle it, clean it up, and probably just respray over the top of the uh, original paint. It looks in pretty good condition, so I think that'll be an easy enough one to do. I've spent a good part of the day getting these prepared and sanded and cleaned, uh, ready for paint. It's now about five o'clock and I'm going to put some paint on it. It can dry overnight. The first thing I'm going to do is put some Metal Guard Primer on it. Uh, it'll go over any of the rust spot. All the rust is gone, but it's a bit, uh, you know, maybe a little bit stuck in the pores. So that should halt that progressing anymore. And I've just realized I've missed one of the little plugs there. Anyway, it's ready to go. I'll put a plug in there and I can start spraying. Just before I do paint it, I've put a little blank in there. For masking, I've used wood and masking tape, there's some more masking tape there, and these little fridge magnets, this is real estate, you just cut them out, glue them on, and they, we don't glue them on, you stick them on, and you know, they seal up really well. So they're good, particularly for big areas like that, you cut a big one there, stick it on the back, and it's sealed up, they're good. All right, I'll put some paint on them. the primer and it's turned out good I'm very happy I've got one hanging up the back there there we go and there's stuff hanging all over the place so I'll let these dry overnight I'll probably paint it the day after actually make sure this is really dry at last I've finished prepping and undercoating all the parts of the radio there's quite a bit here and I'd go inside and then think oh no I forgot these parts I have to bring them out sandblast them paint them yeah so it's two days after I started painting the original chassis so these were all dry and a bunch of shields there hanging up like uh, Christmas decorations so they're all ready to top coat this is the paint I'm going to use it's an automotive paint it was uh, matched to an STC chassis I had a couple of years ago so it'll do this one as well they've put it in a rattle can for me so I can easy enough to spray I don't have to wash out spray equipment all the time <laughs> Uh, okay, I've taken my mask off. I'm going to get out of here. It's still a bit fumy, but uh, I think I've done everything. It's all got one coat on it. I'll come back a bit later and put another coat on. The speaker basket right up the end there, I've only done one side. I'll let it dry, then I'll turn it over and do the other side. I think it's come up pretty good, and I like the colour. It's sort of a golden pink. I suppose it's rose gold almost. All right, I'm getting out of here. It stinks. As we saw, all this has been repainted. I've left it now for a week. It's probably a bit over a week to let the paint get really really hard otherwise when you're trying to do screws and things up it can sort of rip it out a bit so I've left it for you know, about 10 days now and that was fine I had some other projects to finish so I just did those and let this dry I'll remove all this masking and covers and take it inside and I'll see if I've got any hope of getting this back together I started putting this speaker back together and I wasn't going to show it on the video but uh, I've come across something that I didn't realize the issue I found was that the electromagnet here uh, that has a humbucker coil on the top and then it has this other plate on it so that goes on there and then the whole assembly goes on here it's got four bolts through it it goes through these four slots here 
And when I saw this, I realized this voice coil has to fit in this slot around here. So this is the little plate. There's the uh, magnet there. So when you put those two together, there's a slot. There's four bolts here, as I said. There's no dowel pins or anything to locate this. So <laughs> this all has to be set up um, so it's perfect there. And then the basket has to go on there as well, and it has to be centered there. So that's got to be in the center of that, and this plate around here has got to be in the center of that. So I'll fix this on, I'll put the bolts and the nuts through, and come back and I'll show you what I'm going to do to align it. So I've got the bolts and nuts in, and as you can see, um, these, this gap here changes. I can just move that around. I can also move the basket around. So they all need to be centered. So I printed this on a 3D printer. That diameter there is the basket diameter. The hole in the middle is the magnet diameter. And then there's another uh, raised section here. That's the diameter for that plate. So what should happen is that should fit over that magnet. It should fit in that plate and it should fit in this basket. And there it is, I think. Yeah, so that's solid. I can't move that. I can rotate it, but I can't move it sideways. So that should have centered it. If I go and do these nuts and bolts up, it should be centered. I've turned it over and I can just nip these up. I'll do them up gradually. Go across there. That one and that one. And I'll just keep doing that going across until they're tight. I've turned it over again and I should be able to just pop that out. There it is. And that should be perfectly aligned. I'll put the cone back and it'll rub. It's only just rubbing. There's a bit of adjustment underneath for the cone so I should be able to get rid of that tiny bit of rubbing. Here's the back of the cone and the voice coil. There's two holes in this plate and they go in here and that centers the uh, voice coil inside that little slot there. And I'll put the cone in. Here's the back of one of the holes. It just has the uh, screw in there. And then a nut goes on underneath. I'll do this one up. I won't do it up tight. It's just loose. I'll put the other nut in. Or nut and bolt. And I'll turn it over again. I have three strips of plastic. These are off um, strawberry containers. The little plastic containers. So I'll put those in here, and this one here has to go in. This will be a bit tight because it's filling up the other, or the last little bit there. Now I'll turn this over, I'll do the nuts and bolts up. Now let's tighten the two bolts up, and the other one's tucked into the wires a bit here. Okay, let's see how well we went. Now for the big test, if I take these out, I'll push down on it very gently with my fingers, and if there's no scraping, we're okay. Drum roll. Beautiful. Oh, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, that's come up really well. I need to lift this up a bit and put some adhesive in there. I need to put a little filter in there. If you do have one of these speakers, either paint around it and just leave this on, or if you take it off, you know you're going to have to try and center it some way. You could probably do it with feeler gauges and... Uh, you know, you know, various methods. There'd be other ways of doing it. I'll finish putting this all back together, put it aside, and we'll plug it into the radio. This will be the end of part two. Nice short one this week. Next week, I'll attempt to put the chassis back together and see if it works. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I hope you can join me next week for part three of my STC radio adventure.